Hey. So, um, out what Fitspiration. Now, Fitspiration or Fitness Inspiration has completely taken over social media. For those that don't know, it's usually a picture of a ridiculously good-looking guy or girl with hardly any clothes on and then some kind of motivational quote overlaid on top. There's a lot of focus on things like willpower, commitment, motivation, sacrifice, and that kind of thing. And I can see this reflected in the way that people in Sleek Geek talk and think about themselves. They will say things like they lack willpower and call themselves useless. Or they'll commit themselves to a goal, but just give up and say they just can't do it. And some people even come and look for others to motivate them because they just don't have any the motivation for themselves. And you know, while I think having the right kind of attitude and putting in good old fashioned hard work is extremely important and a key part of being successful, I also think that many people are missing a very important piece of the puzzle. And that's what kind of environments you're designing around yourself. This is because your environment has a much bigger impact on your success than things like willpower and motivation. Those things do matter, especially in key moments throughout life, but it is your environment that affects you every minute of every day, for better or for worse, whether you like it or not. It just does. I'll give an example. Researchers collected data from 11 countries around Europe, looking at the percentage of the population who were organ donors. As you can see on the left there, there are four countries with an extremely low percentage of the population who chose to donate the organs after they die. On the right, there are seven countries there with an extremely high percentage of donors. Now, you would think that something as personal as donating your organs would be heavily influenced by things like your beliefs, your culture, your religion, your politics, that kind of thing. But this is not the case. Look at something like Denmark on the far left there and Sweden on the far right. Two fairly similar countries, but a hugely different um, percentage of the population choosing to donate their organs. Now, this is not because the people in Denmark are more selfish than the people in Sweden. Well, the people in Sweden are not more motivated to go and donate their organs than the people in Denmark. This difference is because in Europe, some countries have to choose to opt in to donate their organs, the countries on the left. And other countries have to opt out. So their default environment is chosen for them. And they then have to make an effort to change or less effort to just adhere to what their environment is. So if you live in a country where you are asked to opt in, your default setting is not to donate your organs. You have to actually go and choose to, uh, to donate them. You have to opt in. Countries on the right, it's the other way around. So let me give you a bit more of a relevant example. My friends will often come to me and complain that they struggle to stick to a healthy diet. But when I go to their house, this is what I see. Hardly any healthy food at all. And the healthy food that is there is the pretty crappy kind. It's the stuff they don't like. It's a mission to prepare. And I can understand why they don't want to eat it. On the other hand, unsurprisingly, they are very well stocked up on junk food. They have things like pizzas, microwave meals, alcohol, sweets, chocolates, and Mr. Delivery on speed dial. Now, I'm sure you can see why they struggle. <laughs> They're making the opt-in for healthy food so hard because there's hardly any of it around, and it's stuff they don't like, and it's a mission to prepare. But they're making the opt out for unhealthy food hard as well, because it's all around them, it's easy, it's convenient, and come on, healthy food actually does, uh, unhealthy food actually does taste pretty good. There's nothing wrong admitting that. So, at Sleek Geek, when we help people design their environment, the first place we start is at home, because this is where you probably spend most of your time, and food is one of the biggest factors in your success when it comes to health and fitness. After that, you can branch out. You can apply this to what you take to work, what you give your kids to take to the school, and even other things like your finance and relationships. You can design your environment in any way you want. I'll give you some ideas later. But at the very basic level, you are more likely to eat whatever food is around you, good or bad. If you keep lots of junk food around, you are more likely to eat it. If you keep lots of healthy food around, you're more likely to eat it. This is not about willpower or motivation or genetics or even finding the perfect diet. This is simply your environment and whether they're setting you up for success or failure. Another example, who is more likely to become a smoker? Kids who grew up in a household full of smokers or kids 
who grew up in a household where no one smokes. Now, I know there are exceptions to this rule, but research has shown kids who have parents that smoke are more than two times more likely to become smokers themselves. This is not because they're weak. It's not because they lack willpower or motivation. It's because smoking for them is normal. It's around them 24-7. Their role models are smokers. Why wouldn't they smoke? It's just their default setting. One more example. If I walk into my kitchen and I see a jar of rusks sitting on the kitchen counter, that's the first thing I see. I will have one. I love rusks. I love 10 rusks. But if I walk into the kitchen and I see a big bowl of fruit instead, I may not get the intense craving like I do for rusks, but if I'm hungry, I'll most likely have an apple or something like that that's convenient, it's visible, it's easy to access, that kind of thing. So if you want some actual practical tips for designing your environment, your kitchen environment more specifically, put healthy foods at eye level. Make them noticeable. You know, they always say, out of sight, out of mind. Same thing applies here, in reverse. Put healthy foods in transparent containers, make them visible. Put healthy foods at the front, make them accessible. No one wants to be on their hands and knees crawling to the back of the cupboard to find something like quinoa that they can't even pronounce. <laughs> and of course, do the opposite for less healthy food. Either get rid of it, or at least make it less accessible, less visible, less noticeable, less convenient. I know not everyone wants to get rid of junk food completely, Maybe you have friends or family or significant other, or maybe you just you're okay with having some junk food sometime, but just not all the time. So you can still take steps to minimize that. Um, I said that I'm not saying don't ever have a of chocolate ice cream again. Just don't make it harder than it actually needs to be. So apart from this, apart from designing your environment, one of the key steps to that is actually making sure you have healthy foods that are convenient that you can actually eat right away that you don't have to cook and spend half an hour preparing and things like that. Um, I'll give a quick example. If I'm driving, if, okay, let's say, let's say I'm lying in bed, 10 o'clock at night, freezing cold outside, and I feel like a chocolate. I am not getting out of bed to drive to 7-Eleven and get chocolate. My girlfriend will <laughs> attest to that. But if there's chocolate downstairs in the fridge, I could convince myself to get up and go get some water or go make some tea. And then, oops, there's an empty chocolate wrapper in my hand. Now, that's true, isn't it? You guys, yes. yeah. Now, if you think about it, that was mindless. Like, there was no motivation or willpower or commitment involved there. You almost fooled yourself into eating that chocolate. What if your environment could do that, but for making it healthier instead? What if eating healthy foods could be your default setting? It could be your mindless easy to do setting. Sorry, did I go past there? All right. So examples of easy, healthy food that's convenient, quick to eat. These are very practical. Things that I like for protein, tins of tuna, hard-boiled eggs, protein powder, botong, and leftovers. Whenever we make mince or um, burger patties or chicken or something like that, always make extra for the next day. Vegetables I like. Things like carrots, bell peppers, cucumber, baby tomatoes, sugar snap peas, and pickles. These, no prep required. You can literally take them out of the fridge and eat them. Carbs, uh, things like fruit. I like rolled oats. You can pop in the microwave for four minutes, mix in some protein powder for a nice taste. Uh, <laughs> leftovers like potato, rice, quinoa. They almost taste better the second time you heat them up. And then fats are easy. Things like nuts, nut butter, avocado, coconut, etc. The whole point of having super easy, super convenient, healthy foods is that it's food you can eat even on your worst days. There's times when you lack time, lack energy, lack willpower. Um, you should be able to just, that's your default setting. Elan mentioned that earlier, he said, you know, you kind of, when, when life gets messy, what do you do? What's your default setting? If there's junk food around and you're short on time, you're going to eat that because it's convenient. But if you're short on time and there's lots of healthy, convenient food around, you're going to eat that instead. If you do find yourself complaining about lack of time and lack of energy and lack of willpower, you should probably actually complain more about having a lack of a supporting environment or lacking of planning ahead and being prepared. The, the British Army, they have this saying called the seven Ps that says proper planning and preparation prevents piss poor performance. Now, this is true for the Army and it's true for your kitchen, I promise you. So, in the Sleeky Coaching Program, the one tool we use is called the Traffic Light System. 
And it's where we get our clients to separate various foods into either a green light, a yellow light, or a red light food list. These are their own lists. They're not some prescribed diet or anything like that. It's purely based on their own personal choices. So green foods are, are foods that make you feel good, mentally and physically, things like that. It's foods you can eat normally and slowly without ending up stuffed over full. Foods you don't impulse eat or frequently crave and food that you know is healthy for you and helps you achieve your goals. These are usually things like fruits, vegetables, and protein. So in the green, green light food list, green means go for it. These are foods you want to stock up, stock up on, make them visible, accessible, and convenient to eat. Now yellow light foods are a bit more vague. These are foods that are sometimes okay, sometimes not. Maybe they're foods you can only eat a little bit of, but if you eat too much, then you don't feel so good or foods you can only eat out of a restaurant with others, but not at home alone. You know, often emotional eating and binge eating takes place in private, like Meg said, where you kind of hide it away from everyone, hide all the evidence, and almost hide it away from yourself as well. So think about what foods make you do that, what foods don't. Yellow light foods can also be foods you can only have once in a while, but they're not part of a daily diet. These could be healthy or unhealthy. It's more about how it fits into your lifestyle and goals. So yellow means slow down or approach with caution. And if you do choose to keep these foods around, consider only keeping small portions and don't make them too easy to eat. Okay, so the red light food list, these are foods that are just bad news for you. Foods that make you feel sick or trigger you to eat too much or you find yourself impulsively eating and craving them. These could also be foods that you just know are flat out unhealthy choices and they have no place in your healthy diet. Red means stop or no go, and ideally don't keep these foods in your house at all. If you do, you know, you can't always get rid of everything. Make them less visible, make them inaccessible, and make them less convenient to eat. Just because you can't get rid of them from your house doesn't mean you can't at least do something to make it a little bit easier for you to stick to your healthy diet. Again, I suggest keep them in small portions Ideally, no more than one moderate serving so that you can't overeat. That is your environment supporting you. If you have a bite-sized chocolate in the fridge, you can only eat a bite-sized chocolate. If you have a slab of chocolate in the fridge, you can eat an entire slab. So here's just a recap. Green light foods are usually foods with things like protein, veggies, fruit, and certain healthy carbs and fats. We actually put together a sleek food list for some ideas, so you can go to that link or it will be in that resource toolkit that we'll email out to everyone. Yellow light foods can be quite vague, um, maybe more experimental we'll trial and error to see how these foods actually fit into your healthy lifestyle. They might be on your yellow light food list for a couple of weeks or months, after that you bump them into the green list or the red list, it's up to you. And of course red light foods are usually pretty clear cut. They are foods that don't help you with your goals and or they make you feel like crap. It doesn't mean never have them again, just be extremely cautious. So, I want to emphasize that these foods can be different for everyone. These are your own unique lists. This is why we love this system with our coaching clients because it is personal. I'll give you some examples. For me, I tend to be cautious around things like nuts. They are super healthy, great fat source but very high in calories and I find them very easy to overeat. So I try to keep them at distance and not make them part of my daily life. Ilan, um, he will have certain veggies on his red light food list. Now again, veggies are super healthy. Everyone tells you to eat more veggies. But for him, certain vegetables actually give him stomach problems. You know, gassy, bloating, that kind of thing. So it doesn't matter how healthy those vegetables are, he can't eat them. So with that knowledge, he avoids them and rather focuses on the vegetables that he can eat. And Meg, she was recently vegan until a while ago, so there's certain meats or too much meat doesn't make her feel good either. Again, great protein, dense, healthy source of food, but just because something is healthy or isn't healthy doesn't mean it has to uh, fit into a very specific rule. Rather take what you know and what you feel and then separate them into something a bit more personalized for you. I've got a couple of last thoughts here. Um, no matter how healthy a food is, it does you no good if you don't eat it. That's why I say stock up on healthy foods that you actually like and will eat. You know, there's no food out there that you absolutely must eat. 
I personally don't really like spinach, so I don't tend to eat it much. I rather have carrots and peppers and things like that. Something nice and crunchy. There's enough of a variety of healthy tasting foods out there that you can find the ones you like. And when you're eating foods you like, you're much more likely to stick to that diet. So there we go. Eating a fairly healthy diet consistently over a long period of time beats eating a super duper perfectly healthy diet that you only follow inconsistently or for short periods of time. Most importantly, like the biggest takeaway from this, this talk is the more your environment supports you, the less willpower and motivation you need. That stuff is a bonus. You know, your environment should support you on your best days, you know, when life is going really well, and your environment should also support you even more so on those tough, messy, hard days. And finally, designing or optimizing your environment goes beyond your kitchen. It isn't always compl uh, completely physical either. So your environment can blend in with things like your habits and your behaviors and your choices and even your thoughts to create that default setting that Lung said. Now, he's covered a couple of these already, but I want to give you some more examples. What do you usually do in your free time on the weekend? Are you someone who's sitting here now thinking, I'm looking forward to going for that hike or that park run or trying a new healthy recipe or you know, going to the gym? Or are you thinking about that TV series you want to watch, about that chocolate cake you're going to have? You know, what are your priorities? What are you looking forward to? That that's the environment you're designing in your head. It isn't always physical. You're choosing your default mode. Um, do you have a TV in your bedroom or a book on your bedside table? What do you construct your meals around? What is the primary ingredient? You know, when I make a meal, I look for things like protein and veggies, and then I add fats and carbs at the end. Those are a little bit lower priority. But if you're someone who goes, okay, I'm hungry, what am I gonna have on this bread? What am I gonna have on this pasta? You know, just think about it. What are you constructing your meals around? Do you spend more time talking about gossip and news or your goals and dreams? Again, you're creating that mental environment in your head. Are you your own biggest critic or your own biggest fan? When something goes wrong, do you say to yourself, it's okay, you tried, you do better next time? Or are you someone who starts beating themselves up and calling themselves stupid, that kind of thing? Again, that is a mental environment that you're choosing to create. As Ilan said, it is not hard to change. Sorry, it, it is hard to change it. It's uncomfortable, it takes practice, but you can change that. And again, what is so important that you schedule it into your diary and set reminders on your phone or put up post-its on the mirror or in the fridge? Yeah, so you can find everything we talked about at this link, but we will email it out to you as well. Thanks, guys. Have a great evening. Thank you very much. Well done, guys. Uh, were you inspired by that? Did you learn anything? Yes. yes. Yeah. Guys, if you can just take away one thing from tonight, I'll be absolutely delighted. You must be hungry now. You're hungry? Yes. The guys from iHealth, Chris, they do amazing food. They're an incredible um, delivery.